Hello, I'm Teresa Surratt of Surratt & Co, realtor in the greater Boston area, and I love old homes. Today we are going to take a look at roof styles and some of the advantages to each. In New England, there are no shortages of roof styles. As home styles change, so did the roof styles. Now, I have been known to slam on my brakes to admire a really beautiful antique roof, usually a gorgeous late mansard roof. But let's begin by taking a look at the most common roof in the US, the gable. The distinguishing characteristic of a gable roof is the inverted V shape. This roof design is fairly easy, yet a sturdy design, and also the least expensive construction, making this the go-to type. How much room you will get in your attic will vary depending on the pitch or slope of the roof. It is also a fairly easy roof style to remodel by adding dormers and windows to the ends for more light. A gable roof is sturdy for withstanding snow of colder regions and provides good vent ventilation. However, there have been instances where a gable roof has not been able to withstand extreme winds. A gable roof can be open or box where the end is closed off. There can also be front or side facing and cross gable in a T shape or a gable and valley in an L shape. Another style of roof is the hip roof, characterized by roofing that slopes on four sides with an overhang as opposed to the two-sided gable roof. These were popular in the Georgian era and also in the 50s and 60s ranch style house boom. A hip roof has less usable attic space, but is more wind resistant and protects the house better than a gable roof. A hip roof is also a more expensive construction. This style can have a cross hip or hip and valley style with T or L shapes similar to gable roofs. It can be a little trickier to remodel based on the construction and will need extra beams typically to remodel the rooms below. The jerkin head is a cross between the gable and hip with more attic space than a hip roof, but with greater wind stability than a gable. It is also more expensive to construct. The mansard roof has the maximum attic space. This style was very popular in the Second Empire era, generally around 1870, but faded with the preceding Victorian era and Queen Anne styles, and then the Georgian revival at the turn of the 20th century. A gambrel roof, which might remind you of a barn, was a way to create the maximum interior attic space with the least prominent exterior therefore less expensive than the hip and mansard roof styles. A salt box style is a style that might make you think immediately of quintessential New England, and it's true. The salt box was a very early New England style home. While the back of the home does not allow for as much usable space due to the sloping, it does provide excellent rain and snow runoff, and it's a very stable construction. A dormer, on a roof can also have different styles, such as gable, shed, hipped, or eyebrow, as some of the most common. An easy example is the classic cape style home, where significant usable space is added to the second floor with the dormer. So there you have it, a quick rundown on some of the classic New England antique style roofs. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, Surrett & Co, and check out my other videos on greater Boston architecture. Don't miss out on windows and doors.